Hi, guys. Well, from beautiful, if a little chilly, Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up on the show today, Dan. Yeah. Uh, BYU, that's Brigham Young University down in Provo, Utah. The Mormons. Uh, they have they have this n- nasty little thing called the Honor Code, and they have an update to it. Yeah, and the Mormons, the Mormons been futzing with some things. Yeah, they've been, they've been doing a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of they, they got their tool toolbox out, and they've been. Uh, well, yeah, they're trying. This is what they like to do. Mm. They like to try. Uh, to appear like they're good on issues, the important oh, yeah. ish, social issues of the day. We love gay people. Yeah. No, yeah. they don't. No, no, they don't. But we'll and talk so, about but the they're, newest. They're, they're latest... changing how the rules are written. But did they really change anything? Nothing has changed. <laughs> Every everything is different, and nothing has changed. Oh my god! And that's coming up later. <clears throat> but first, but damn. first, let me tell you something. Yeah. This morning. Uh, this very morning, I uh, did some shaving. Did you know? I don't know if you noticed, uh, but like my neck, I my noticed cheeks, there was something. I yeah. am just clean as a whistle. Clean. Uh, and I do so with the precision blades of a Harry's razor. Uh, and let me uh, let me ask you something. Uh-huh. When you go out, you buy a razor in this world, would it be better if it was on sale for 50% off? Yeah. Well, yeah, because <laughs> razors, if you just go out <laughs> yeah, just into the world, as you say, and buy them, and buy them, uh, are stupid expensive. Stupid expensive. All right. So instead, so instead of waiting for the sale, why not just get it all at like 55% off compared to the leading brand? Oh, that's great. From Harry's.com. Yeah. Because uh, they, they also <clears throat> like, do they ever go on sale? Uh, do does hair, do razors ever go on sale? Yeah, no, they just gouge you. Yeah, with yeah. razors. That's dangerous, <laughs> you guys. That's razor gouging. You could get killed. You could get re- or really hurt. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, but, so look, but Harry's doesn't gouge. Yeah. Uh, not only are they just are Harry's uh cheaper just in general. Yeah, you're gonna save even more. Ah, uh-huh. because if you go to Harry's dot com slash tgia. That's thank God I'm atheist. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You'll get five dollars off the Harry's trial set. Oh, that's nice. So it's a great deal. It's a it, it's definitely worth a try. We both love it. We use yeah. the uh, the that shaving cream is the best shave gel I've ever used. Yeah, I, I agree. love it. The blades themselves, the the you know, it's basically two bucks instead of four to six bucks for the for, for the, the ca- replacement for the cartridge. cartridge. Yeah. You got a five blade cartridge, which, which is such a smooth shave. Just glides over, yeah, uh, your face, and then you think, "Oh, that couldn't have done anything," and then you're shaved. It, Magic. I know. It's kind of crazy. I have to like reach up and feel my cheeks. Did it work? <laughs> and it did. I'll be damned. <laughs> anyway, uh, look, Harry's has an amazing offer for just just for you, the listeners of our show. New customers get five dollars off that trial set. Harrys.com slash TGIA. You'll get a five blade razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel with aloe, and a travel cover. Mm-hmm. In case you want to travel and yeah. you don't want to shave all the clothes in your in your suitcase. Yeah. So yeah, join the millions of guys who are already saving money. Go to Harrys.com slash TGIA, claim your offer, and then uh, it helps us out too. Yeah, that's great. Everybody wins. Absolutely. All right, Dan. Yeah. Um, so apparently in Switzerland, okay, uh, there I've was, heard of it. there was some, uh, question about, um, the Jägermeister logo. Okay. <laughs> this is, um, this is the, the liqueur, the, l- the yeah. herbal liqueur Jägermeister that for whatever reason people like to shoot. Oh my gosh. It's, I find it so disgustingly nasty, but I don't I, like, it's, I, it's the black licorice thing. I yeah. don't like it. Some people I, love I, it. Like, I, get it. I, I could not imagine like shooting it, but the <laughs> flavor of it's, I mean, I like licorice, so. Okay. You know, whatever. There you go. Um, it's like syrup. But I don't know if you've ever really like looked at the label. It's Have you ever of, looked at the label? Well, it's got like a deer thing on it. Yeah, it's like a stag. Yeah, right. Because Jägermeister means uh, hunting, a hunter, a master hunter. Ooh, really? In, in German. Uh, well, right up 
above the the stag's head. Okay. Between all of its lant or antlers. Or lanterns, right? whatever you're lant- lant- <laughs> Lantners. Um there is a <clears throat> Christian cross. Oh, yeah. And so there's been a question, Dan. Uh oh. And a and an accompanying lawsuit oh. about the offensiveness to Christians that the Jägermeister logo what? might cause. <clears throat> Why would it cause offense? It's their symbol on a product. Wouldn't they like that? Alcohol. Oh. <laughs> Dan. Oh. The, this is not good. Do they know that Christians drink alcohol? Uh, not well, all of them. I don't know. Um, the, so this, uh, suit, uh, argued that the logo could offend the country's Christians, oh. uh, but do not fear fans <laughs> of Jägermeister. A, uh, federal administrative court has ruled that the intensive use of the logo had weakened its religious character's over or its religious character over time, making the chance of genuine offense unlikely. Um, the logo, which uh, apparently uh, refers to the legend of Saint Hubertus, <laughs> or it's my favorite saint, the the apostle of the Ardennes. Oh. Uh, he is said to have converted to Christianity one Good Friday in the eighth century after witnessing a stag with a crucifix. Between its antlers. Oh. So that's what it's referencing. Um, but I don't know. Maybe the party culture and just the gross commercialization <laughs> of uh, St. Hubertus's uh, story uh, got some Christians a little peeved. I, I think St. Hubertus uh, was just getting his drank on. I just think it's interesting that a group of Christians... Uh well just just the idea that the the sim the symbolism right and yeah. and and, the, and it literally a symbol right the cross yeah um that it could be somehow under their control we own that right that it, is it, almost ours. as if it was their intellectual property right that they'd forgotten to actually We're, yeah back in the eighth century or whatever. <laughs> to, <laughs> They've forgotten to trademark it. To trademark it, yeah. I just think that that's so... It's... I don't know. I mean, there are lots of symbols that I find offensive. Mm. But, like... But this isn't, like, attached to, I don't know, a holocaust or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, well, I mean, it is attached to well, lots of... Well, fair the... enough. But it wasn't, like, the what happened to the swastika. Right. Right, yeah. due to the Nazis, like like that is that that symbol has been irrevocably, like just linked to something truly horrifying. Right, right. Whereas, you know, by the way, just quick public service announcement. Yeah, uh, just because a symbol, I've seen this before, and I'm just going to make sure that all of our listeners understand that just because a symbol has origins in something beautiful, uh-huh. like the swastika did, right, doesn't mean you can wear it and have and then get mad at people for being mad at you for wearing it or whatever. Right, because you don't understand like the original. You thing. obviously don't get it. I mean, it was actually a sign of peace in India, so that's what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. You don't get to do it. They, it yeah. got it got ruined. You have to acknowledge the real history and that's the end. Yeah. Uh are you, are you worried? I am worried. I've seen it. I've yeah. seen people doing it. Ugh. So there Let's you go. Let's take back the swastika. Let's take it back. It wasn't yours. It wasn't, yeah, it was, it was theirs. And th- in India, they still use it. I saw it ar- ar- yeah. around in India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I've seen old buildings. Apparently, India get, like facades taken mm-hmm. off, and all of a sudden, there's like a row of swastikas. Whoa! Have you ever seen this before? No. Oh, this oh, happened, oh like, like like a like a like repeating built into sort of image like or... the 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 brick pattern. Oh, sure, whatnot, sure, right? Yeah, but d- distinct, right? Like not just like oh, there's some weird. No, it's clear <laughs> these were swastikas, and they were covered probably in the 1940s. Right, yeah, exactly. With, with some new facade because everybody was like, oh, we want to, let's get rid of those. Yeah. But yeah, they'll, no. Um, Interesting. I saw a building get that treatment once. <laughs> and then there was like this debate about, like, well, what should we do? And everybody made your point. Right. You cover it back up, mm-hmm. take some pictures, 
Cover it back up. It's interesting history. Now make it go away. <laughs> <clears throat> there you go. Uh, hey, we live in Utah where the, uh, I don't know if you know this, the legislative session is underway. Oh, God. Fast and furious. It's, yeah, I It's know. mayhem and madness up oh. on Capitol Hill. Oh, my God. The nonsense <laughs> that comes... It just happens every year. <laughs> every year it just ruins my February. It's every just year. the worst. And then the uh, and then uh, also and then <laughs> the the drinking laws. We never know what's going to happen with our drinking laws. Right. We never know what's going to happen. Well, here's here's two things that have come out uh, or that have that are that are trying to make their way through the Utah State Legislature as we speak. Okay. Uh, one, they're cracking down on pornography. Thank God. Thank. God and the yeah. way that they're doing that because I don't know if you remember this, our governor declared it a, a a statewide health emergency. Yeah, he did not make such a claim about the pollution, which in Salt Lake City can be as bad as Beijing. Right, but he did make a claim about the porn. Yeah, well, it's a public health, you know, nuisance. It's a yeah. hazard. We oh could all God. die. We could all die. It's well, it's everywhere. It's, <laughs> first of all, damn. <laughs> It is if my phone's involved. Uh, uh, quick, by the way, you guys, uh, porn is fine. It's not. It's it's not. We're making jokes. Yeah, it's not addictive or anything. Uh, you can you can have an unhealthy relationship with it. But, oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but don't worry, the Utah legislature is going to save you from it. Uh, and the way that they're going to do that is by requiring. <clears throat> I love this. So a much. warning label, <clears throat> which is. Really, here's How the thing. How is this going to be enforced? Like, because what? well, what they do is they're making it so that you can sue. Uh, so, individual private citizens can sue porn companies to just stumble upon. See, here's the thing: Are they talking about online porn? The online and and in person, every okay. everything. The, the, here's the here. How many times in your life? I'm sure it's happened. To someone. But how many times in your life did you, A, stumble upon porn and not know it was porn? Right. Right? You don't need a warning. No. Right? And the second one is, how many times have you just stumbled upon porn? You, you kind of... Like you go, you, you're going there for you, the porn. Yeah. Although the first there porn can be I ever some, saw, like unsafe search results that sometimes happen, like right. on Google, but they have settings for that. Yeah. Filter it out. Absolutely. Not like, only that, but like all of the porn sites <clears throat> already have like acknowledge that you're over eighteen. Yes, exactly. And these and this this warning label is just like this could be harmful to kids. It's like skull and crossbones, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, because warning labels. Are so effective, like the like sort of like the Surgeon General warning, but you it's know, like you know how many people the have Gary s- Herbert warning. Do you understand how many people have stopped smoking because they didn't know that it was bad for them? <laughs> they looked at that label yeah. and they were like, "Holy shit, really? I yeah. could die from this! Oh yeah. my god, I'm never going to smoke again." No, the best thing you can do is make it expensive, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, here's it. So anyway, um, yeah, it would take away the branding, yeah, or right. something. Anyway. That's happening. That's stupid. The other thing that's happening in the Utah State State Legislature, which I find fascinating, mm-hmm. and I think I'm in support of it, okay. is that they're de. It looks like they're going to decriminalize polygamy. Yeah, didn't we talk about this? Yeah. Well, no, well, we talked I mean, about it like making its way through committee. Yeah. So now it's like actually now it's passing with yeah. flying colors. Yeah. So like uh, that's a, uh, that's that's so there you go. Did you hear the other thing that they might do? Uh oh. They might uh, make it legal to participate in like uh, wine of the month clubs. Oh, yeah. Whatnot. I did see that. Because like right now you can't get it shipped to your house. Right. But so there's two competing bills. <laughs> uh-huh. um, and what I find fascinating about both of these bills, well, especially the first one, right? Right. Is that it's just some ding dong from Utah County, <laughs> right? Who's never had a drink in his life? Right, had no idea that you that you couldn't even direct order wine, and that this was a thing elsewhere. Right, right, and that, but that it couldn't be done here. Right, right, and uh, and he's like, well, I don't see why not. Right, some Mormon <laughs> guy, and he's like, well, let's let's run a bill. And so, in his best sort of dumb Utah County way, um, he 
creates this plan that you could direct order from the winery, yeah, right? Uh, have it shipped to the UDABC office, the liquor store, right. right? Which is all of our liquor store. All of this liquor in the state goes through the goes state. Goes through the state. And then it would have their standard 80% markup attached to it. <laughs> and then it would be shipped to your house. You're paying for shipping, shipping, and an 80% markup. Sounds great. Absolute insanity. <laughs> Who wants to participate in that? And then somebody <clears throat> caught wind of that and said, oh, we can do that better. Mm. And so they were like, let's do direct shipping, have it still go to the liquor store, not all the way to people's houses, because, you know, the children right, who are what? Going to be signed? Like, <laughs> they ID you for Christ's sake and make you sign for They don't just leave it on your fucking doorstep which by the way as soon as you bring it inside you just leave it in an unlocked cabinet your children could still get it if they want i know to. right shut up and so like the 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 this one would not have the 80 percent markup okay and but it also could not be a product that's otherwise available in the state <laughs> so i mean they're trying yeah, it's, these poor people they're very trying they <laughs> They try me. They're the tr- yes, most. It's oh my god! All right, let's okay. get let's go. All move right. on, please. Um. So Dan, I don't know why I thought this story was going to be more fun than it is. It's actually a horrible story. Oh goody! Um. And so with that, sorry guys. Um. Have you ever come across this this phrasing before? A, a tiger widow. Do you know what a tiger widow is? Yeah, that's like a, it's a plant. <laughs> it's decidedly not a plant. Oh, okay. Um, I've heard of a pussy willow and a... No, not widow. Okay, As fine. in like a woman whose husband is dead. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let me throw this out at you. Um, in Bangladesh, um, a lot of men will go uh, sort of out into the woods or the forests uh in particular the story focuses on on one one man who would um go honey hunting right okay out into the to outside of the village that he lived in sure um and <sighs> unfortunately um where they live there are a lot of bengal tigers sure and the bengal tigers uh attack people and eat them okay right why why wouldn't they why wouldn't they Delicious. well so uh what happens is these men die and their wives become known as tiger widows okay okay which i was like okay well that's kind of a thing i don't know yeah. well what happens though is that because of local superstition these women are shunned well, by oh, no by their neighbors they're branded as witches. Oh my god! And even like like their own family will abandon them. Well, um, I mean, it is probably their fault when you think about it. <laughs> this is uh, who, Masamat, control, who, who controls tigers? It's the women. Yeah, Masamat Rashida. Uh-huh. She says, "My sons have told me that I am an unlucky witch." Oh my god! Um, and they her have, own sons. Her own sons. They have uh, they have uh, shunned her. Uh, while she's also being ostracized by the people in her community. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, apparently this happens to, um, well, over between the period of 2001 and 2011, uh, 519 men died from tiger attacks. Wow. Uh, in 50, 50 different villages in a district that has about half a million people. It's a good thing these tigers are going extinct. (laughs) Think of the widows. Think of the widows, you guys. (laughs) Stop trying to save the tigers. I can you fucking believe this? Oh my god. Um, So Rashida, of course, she's she's heartbroken about her sons, um, who are they're adults. They're uh, twenty four and twenty seven. They've abandoned her and. There are two younger siblings who still live with her. Um, she says, they are a part of the soci- this society, after all. <laughs> um, she lives in a tiny shack. Uh, the roof has been blown off by a recent cyclone. Oh, my God. Um, and there have been no offers of help from neighbors or officials. 
um, who she says have helped others in the village, but have uh, refused to help her. Can you fucking believe this? I can't even wrap my head around. Like, well, first of all, where these? Why aren't these guys tiger sons? Right. Right. Like their dad. How? Like protect your dad. Oh well, I mean, God. like, why aren't like? How is it that this goes back to the woman? Well, because right? uh, as we as we know for a fact, uh, women suck more than men. Women are worse than men. Always. <laughs> it just seems like every religion in the universe finds a way to make women the at fault for everything. I know. All he just wanted some honey. He. J- <laughs> I. J- Tigers, man. All right. Can you fucking believe that, though? Yeah. That's... Okay, there are a lot of different ways that I can imagine dying. I don't like m- most of them. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, this has to be a way... Of, uh, I-, I cannot imagine being mauled and eaten to death. You know, if it did, wouldn't reflect so badly on my wife, I'd be pretty down with it. <laughs> If Andrea wasn't going to get a bunch of crap about it, I'd be like, how badass is that? Like, Dan went out fighting a tiger. I'd be on board. But all of a sudden, everybody's just, like, shunning. Or... Everybody, everybody's like, oh, Dan, God. Dan's pretty badass, but what did Andrea do? <laughs> did she witch that? Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess they're assuming that, that, they, that the woman somehow goaded the tiger into it magically. And wants to bring <laughs> this shame on her? Right. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Nope. Uh, it's weird. It's one of the very few uh, religious superstitions that seems not to make sense on its face. The rest of them, almost <laughs> they all, all of them, they make so much sense. It's but this one sense. seems to not. Uh, well, I'm going to go next door to India. Oh, okay. Uh, where uh, 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 this is also a delightful little story. Oh, we're doing so happy, so so well right now. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you know this. Uh, I didn't know this, but apparently in Hinduism, uh, a woman who is menstruating is not supposed to go into a kitchen or a temple. Now, considering I get the kitchen, <laughs> considering who probably makes most of the meals in that country. I don't know how you can ask the women not to go into the kitchen for, you know, several days in a row. But okay, apparently that's a thing. <laughs> that's right. How are we going to eat? Are we g- Mom's menstruating. Uh, no. <laughs> go through menopause already. It's fend for yourself. So apparently it's, there's it's leftovers. There's a college, a girls college in the sit- town of Buj. Uh w- that uh, has a small temple inside in in the college, uh, and apparently there were reports of women in, who attend this college, of students at this college, um, being on the rag and going to uh, the kitchen or going they were near the temple. They were or even touching each other, which was the other thing. They're not allowed to touch each other. Touch any like what? Touch other people. Yeah, you can't touch other people when you're when I you're don't know <clears throat> going through your period of uncleanness. So apparently the solution to this was that they marched sixty eight girls women, college students, yeah. into the bathroom and inspected their underwear. Oh my god. One by one. What? Yeah. I mean, the, what, what's good, I guess, about this, I guess, is that there was some outrage, so apparently it's not normal or okay. Right. But it's really not normal or okay. Like, that's very much not the not okay. So anyway, what yeah. Is, oh, my God. Yeah. The college uh, is looking into it. They're looking. They're the the trustees are. Oh, so are, this wasn't sanctioned by the. School. Oh no, it was. It was. Sa- oh, it was like okay. the, the 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 head dudes were doing it, but the 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 board is now is now ex- ex- examining it, but getting involved. You don't oh, want the board involved. You don't want the board involved. Oh my god! So, hooray for all religion. You know, you know how much better Eastern religions are than our stupid Western <laughs> religions. So much better. 
yeah. tigers and menstruation and such. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, Dan. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Okay. I guess I'll start with my shock that uh, this this headline uh, actually exists. Okay. Uh, that th- this is this is something that happened. Something can still shock you. Something can still shock. We've me. been doing this show for a minute. Uh, the headline is Texas Church expelled from Southern Baptist Convention. Oh, what did they do uh, for hiring sex offender as pastor? Uh, see now that <laughs> there's a lot packed into that. I don't know. Like, is the shocking thing that they were expelled? Okay, because that's that's the only shocking thing to me. Shock number one. (laughs) The only thing that shocks me is that anybody cares about that. Um, First shock, mild shock, is that a church would just, just, you know, unabashedly hire a sex offender as as their pastor. (laughs) Like, you would think that, like going into the relationship with their new pastor that you don't knowingly hire. There are certain things that right. just disqualify like, you. Yeah. It'd be one thing for, for, I mean, it's horrible when, when congregations stick by their, their shitty pastor. Right. Right. Because they, they all fell in love with him and it turns out that he's a piece of shit. Right. Right. Like you can kind of get your mind around the psychology there and everything and go, okay, well, whatever, that's horrible. They should be, but they already, yeah. but, but, they already had a relationship right. with the person. Um, this, they know the way to go into it. Yeah. Right? And it's just like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? Yeah. And then the real shock, as you say, is uh, that the, the Southern Baptist Convention actually has done the right thing. Yeah. And, and said, n- n- no, you're not one yeah. of us then. Um, this article goes into all of the political movements that made this possible um, suffice it to say that the executive committee or whatnot of the Southern Baptist convention, um, the executive committee is what I said uh, that they, that they made, they took this action after a lower committee recommended that this is what they do. Okay, okay cool. They sort of it's, investigated and asked some questions. They're not it's being moved up the committees. Yeah, they they asked the questions. They found out that it was true. Yeah. They so what so this is what they have done. Uh the name of the church is Ranchland Heights. Uh they say that it is no longer uh to be considered in friendly cooperation <laughs> with the Southern Baptist <laughs> Convention, said the Reverend Mike Stone. Oh chairman my. of the executive committee <laughs> he would not share why the church was being removed but whoever runs their um uh twitter feed i believe uh was willing to dish um, <laughs> it said the executive co- uh committee um has moved to disfellowship ranchland heights baptist church in midland texas because of its employment of a long i'm sorry of a lifetime registered sex offender as pastor well uh at this point if you're a member of that congregation you almost get what you deserve i mean if it weren't if it weren't that i'm fearful for the children yeah i'd just be like and and the women folk well i oh that's true they probably didn't get a vote (laughs) (laughs) so it's not their fault it's only the men that get to decide things in this world. Yeah, indeed. All right. Um, well, I'm going to close this out on what I consider to be a positive note, uh, which yeah. is that uh, in Florida, there's a very famous place called the Holy Land Experience. Oh, really? Do you, you? I think you remember this from the movie Religious. I think that's the place. Oh, that place. That yes. Bill Maher visited where yes. he talked... At length with Jesus, right, and various uh, other apostles and whatnot. You're, you know, you're various and sundry. You're, 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 you're it was like a living dwellers. history thing. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they got all they, I think they had all sort. Yeah, they had live shows that would happen all over the place and whatever. Yeah. Uh, well, they they won't. They're not talking, but they did file a thing with the state 
letting them know that they are going to be laying off 118 people, the bulk of their uh, employees. Uh, So we don't know what's happening. Apparently, you can still buy a ticket to this place. But, uh, yeah, it's going down. It's, oh uh, it, it, it is sinking like Ken Ham's I, arc. What I mean, what do you do if you've invested the bulk of your career in being a Jesus impersonator? <laughs> right. You take that show to Vegas, baby. <laughs> you do Jesus as Elvis, uh, and then you got a, you got a whole show. You you switch around some lyrics. Yeah. Would you, oh, let me be. <laughs> Your savior. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. You got a whole, you can do a whole shtick. Yeah. <laughs> That's your only hope. That's, yeah. You got nothing. Oh, at that point. God. Well, I mean, you can also uh, rent yourself out for like picture. Have you ever seen any of the uh, like engagement announcements that have Jesus in the picture? No. With his hand on both of the, on both parties? No, I have not. Uh, birth announcements. You can, what? A, sure. This is a thing? Oh, it's a thing. Oh, I've seen it God. on the interwebs. The Mormons don't really do that shit, but like. No. Down in the South, oh, you could find some people to hire you to be in their, in their photo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to, you got to have the right look though. Well, you got to have, I mean, oh yeah. These are guys who are like cultivating a, a good beard. A, you got to have a, a well manicured beard. Yeah. You got to have nice long hair. Yeah. Uh, it's the only I'm, way I'm, you get to be sort of have that hippie look as a, as a Christian. As a have Christian. It be acceptable, right? Yeah. Yeah, if you if you own the sandals and the robe, you're yeah. golden. <laughs> <laughs> this can't be a thing. Are you serious? It's a thing. I what I want to see, I want to see some representation. I want to see a fat Jesus out there getting work. I want to see obviously black Jesus uh needs right. to happen. I want to see girl Jesus, Dan. <laughs> yeah. I want you to grow out your hair <laughs> and offer your services here in Utah. I don't have the hair for it anymore. I used to. I used you, to. Have, you can be middle aged, Jesus. I had gorgeous. I and mean, that is part of the problem. Love. You are clearly older than thirty three. <laughs> I am at this point. Yeah. And, and it's uh, it's all gray now. I'm too old for that. <laughs> I gotta. I gotta. <laughs> middle my... aged, Jesus. Uh, yeah, I that's be also Satan. a thing. You age out of being Jesus. You, yeah. There's a. There's a. This is a. You hit a ceiling window. It's it's like being a. It's like being an athlete. It's like being a professional athlete. Eventually, you're gonna age out. Well, you know, to be honest, it's <laughs> kind of probably the perfect. Like a a professional athlete uh-huh. could probably transition into being a professional Jesus. Like the timing is probably pretty good. <laughs> right. There you go. All right. Well, I mean. Don't don't waste your fifty dollars on on uh, on a ticket to the Holy Land. That's what we're getting <laughs> oh, at. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, listen, kids, if you have been to the Holy Land and would like to lament its demise, please feel free to write into us podcast at thankgodimatheist dot com or call and leave a voicemail message. The telephone number is four two four six 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 eight four four two. Yeah, go to the Facebook page, facebook dot com slash tgi atheist, and click on that like button. And while you're there, search for the tgi. A members only lounge and request to join is a closed group, but we will let you in. Also, find us on Twitter at TGI Atheist. Awesome. Frank. Dan. There's a plan in place. Oh, I like a good plan. Oh, you don't like this one. I don't? It's going to ruin everything. Oh. And you, you won't like who's made this plan. This is, <laughs> this is the Jews. And you know, you know, want to know how I know it's the Jews that are the problem? Because Rick Wiles is talking about it. <laughs> and if Rick Wiles is talking about it, there's only oh. one place that any of his slippery slopes end, and that's oh. in a synagogue. Oh, uh, he's right. talking. Who's he talking to? He's talking to some lady. He's talking to some people. Uh, he's got guests who are experts in Judaism, uh, and they're gonna they're gonna tell you all about what's what's happening. It's a plan. <laughs> oh, did you know that they're Messianic Jews? <laughs> is that clear they're, in the they're, clip? They're Jews for Jesus. That's isn't that That's, what a Messianic? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here we go.
they want to rule the world. They want to get Gentile riches, and they want to um, they want to rule the Gentiles. They don't consider Gentiles fully human beings, and in fact, as an end game, they have this uh, strange doctrine, Adam Kadmon doctrine, which Adam Kadmon of, uh, originally was, according to Zohar and Talmud, he was androgynous. You know, Adam ma- was Adam, like he wasn't male or he was male female in one body, and this is why you see this transgender agenda today and there are laws very serious laws passing in alberta canada is zionism behind the transgender movement you know i don't think that personally i don't think zionist christians are aware of this they're not aware of many details of what is zionism but i think that yes does the transgender movement get its origin in zionism yes it gets its origin in zionism and it gets its origin in the talmud zohar and kabbalah it's a kabbalistic doctrine of adam kadmon which is uh, eventually they have this doctrine called tikkun olam repairing the world so how do they want to repair the world they want to bring it to the original who was original adam he was androgynous so now they're putting specific things in food and drink, and they're uh, basically their end game is to make um, humans that are on Earth that will survive whatever it is they're bringing uh, androgynous. The transgender agenda. What they're really trying to do is undo God's creation. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Exactly. They are at they are at odds with the Creator. Right. I just I. The uh, the thought that they're putting stuff in the food and in the water supply to make people androgynous, a what would that be like? What what exactly? What I want to know what research facility they have, what sort of Nazi like research facility they have where they're testing different things. Does that make you more androgynous? No. It, oh shoot! It just made them grow another head. Yeah, I don't know. The, I don't know. The, it's um, this whole conspiracy theory is so wildly it, out of it, control. It, it, it makes skin repel makeup, <laughs> right? Or and, and, and attracts hair, it. Hair for... just sort of naturally kind of just falls off at a certain length. It just, it just, yeah. It, so all hair grows to a nice medium page boy. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's cool. What else could it do? Um. I, I think it inhibits I think, boobs or boob grow, development or grows them on men. Oh, Everybody yeah. gets uh, just moderate boobs. <laughs> nobody, nobody gets big boobs. Nobody has pecs. It's just moderate boobs mm. for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! That uh, sounds sounds like that sounds like a really good plan. It's like it, it's like, a perfect they, plan. They, they've they've cleared like. And it, and if, it, but first of all, <laughs> but, but what, what does, what do transgender, how do transgender people fit into this? Well, they're, they're the, they're, they're the front lines in this war to, first of, of all, of, of, of androgyny. Be, of andro- and, that makes no fucking sense. Right, exactly. Switching from like, like, like conform, like gender com- conforming. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. I think, I think they're probably seeing, you know somebody who's who's non-binary because all the kids these days they're doing the non-binary thing. Boy, that just bakes their noodle. These people yeah, can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. These yeah. people can't handle that. Pick a side. But that's not. He's just I, fucking confusing a lot of different things here. Look, and I, just I, like, <laughs> I mean, I can't even believe like we're trying to make heads or make make sense of this damn thing because it's just like it's so. It's, it's stupid. It's so batshit crazy. Like it's literally break out the tinfoil hats. I, they're turning the frogs gay. It's all just madness. I also love at the beginning how she says that you know the Jews are the ones who don't consider the anyone who isn't them fully human. <laughs> oh, that they're the ones. Are they the ones that do that? Anyway, uh, hey, we had some uh, some people contact us. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. This uh, here's an email. It's uh, it is unsigned. It says, "Hi, Frank and Dan. 
past couple of years, I have realized how much it bugs me when people say bless you when I sneeze. <gasps> oh, really? I know it's a common thing, but people that I don't, that I know aren't religious even say it to me. I wish mm. people thought about why they were saying it before they do. I'm wondering if this is something I shouldn't even pay attention to and forget about it like I do every time <laughs> someone says it to me. Or should I respectfully tell them how I feel? Oh, my God. Been a listener for a couple years, and you two have helped me through a lot. Keep Aww. on doing what you're doing. Well, friend, here, here's what I say. Here's the thing. If you're around me and you sneeze, mm -hmm. I probably won't just say bless you because I like to go all the way with it uh -huh. and say, may the Lord bless and keep you. <laughs> Right or God bless you very right. much or something like that. I right. like to I like to go all the way with it and have some fun with it uh, because look, the phrase "bless you" and even "God bless you" are not religious phrases anymore. No. Not in this culture. Those no. are cultural phrases now. Just bless you. Those, bless they you. Just, you can ignore it completely because it, nobody actually means. They're not thinking. Oh, I hope God blesses you right now. <laughs> It's right. just this knee jerk saying thing. So right. I think you can, I think you can safely not worry about yeah. it. Okay, I got a couple things to say about. Okay, this. okay, sure. Because as a sneezer, <laughs> yeah. as somebody who sneezes a lot, which, dear listeners, I know you don't know this about me because I don't sneeze on the show, <laughs> right? And if I did, it would be edited. We would, we would clear it out. Right. But I sneeze a fuck ton in the normal course of a day. Right? <laughs> like I wake up and sneeze and blow my nose and sneeze and sneeze and it's just a mess. I sneeze at work mm. you know, all through the day whatever. Well, because I sneeze so much and people were just like saying bless you, bless you, bless you so much around me that I told everybody in the office, I was just like hey listen, everybody, I've been blessed enough. <laughs> <laughs> you, like I'm letting everybody off the hook. If I sneeze, don't feel like you have to acknowledge it or you're being impolite or something. Like I get it. I just sneeze a lot. Yeah. Right. And w one of my my coworkers that's like right next to me, uh, she goes, oh, "You atheist." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's not that at all. Like, it's just first very, of all, it's very funny that we're other... all supposed to acknowledge your sneeze, right? That's and that's my other point as a sneezer. Yeah, right. Is why the hell do we have this custom only for sneezing? You cough, nobody says anything. Yeah, right? You can, but that's but it's but it's it's, a, it's an iffy thing. It's not. You have to be like a like if you're just like. <laughs> is somebody no? Nobody's yeah. gonna say anything, right? right? But, like, but but a big sneeze. But a big sneeze. Here's the thing. It's because everybody in the room has to stop. We're all having a conversation. There's four of us having a conversation, and then one of us goes, and yeah. then and then we all wait, and then it's like it's it's almost like saying, "It's okay, you interrupted. We understand." Oh, bl God bless you. Bless. Oh, bless your heart. Bless you. Bless his stupid <laughs> little heart. His uh, little heart. Yeah, I, it's a weird thing, but it's a strange custom. But I, you know, bl bless you to me is the same thing as gesundheit or whatever. It's just, it's just a cultural saying. It's yeah. not nobody, nobody is I, thinking yeah. about Jesus in that I, moment. Yeah, but I don't even like the acknowledgement. Don't acknowledge, please, everybody, just ignore my sneeze. Oh no, we can't help it. It's just it's, ignore the sneeze, everybody. It has been ingrained in us since birth we're gonna say something i would Frank. like us to all from now on to just oh, no. act like it didn't happen i'm gonna make a bigger deal now <laughs> <laughs> every time i hear you sneeze i'm gonna make a big issue of it okay cool it's fine <laughs> all right well thanks for writing in we have a voicemail we do have a voicemail um this is uh this is a listener who has uh, a school assignment and is looking for some help on it. Okay. And wants our... Our expert advice. Our expert advice. Yeah. Hi, I'm Sarah from Maryland. And you probably won't use this, but I'm a student and uh, I go to a Catholic school. And I'm currently writing a paper. And it's why should faith remain or not remain constant in face of, like, atrocities like the Holocaust? Because uh, we were reading a book about the Holocaust. Uh, so I need, like, three reasons. Because I kind of like pissing off of my Catholic uh, English teacher. So I was wondering what your thoughts were on, like, what were some reasons, like, why faith shouldn't remain constant. Like, I know it's Catholic school, and Catholics like to do a lot of, like, backflips to try and get to, like, 
to justify what they think. But I was just wondering what you thought. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sarah. I, this is – we'll do your homework for you. <laughs> faith – okay, so the the question was why should faith rem- – why should or shouldn't faith remain constant in the face of atrocity? Of atrocity, yeah. Okay. okay. It's a, I mean, it's a tricky thing because, like, perspective is everything in this one. Right. You know, if, if you're – if you're a deep believer, mm-hmm. faith should remain constant in the face of anything. If a dragon eats your well, brother, like you should stay faithful. You, you can have crises of faith as a believer <laughs> as long as, as long as the result is correct. The result <laughs> is, is because then your faith has been fortified and strengthened. It's mm. been through a difficult time, yeah. right? Like the, the 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 that that what the steel is being forged, you know? Yeah, right. right. But like. Um, but, but the point, the problem, the point is that faith is like the worst thing you can have. Right. Faith is a belief in things unknowable. Right. By its definition, that's foolhardy. Right. So whether it's in the face of an atrocity like the Holocaust or in the face of a tree, Next to you. It should always be dwindling. You should always be like, mm, <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> Doubting one's faith should be the first well, resort. Yeah, and I think that that's actually the right approach here, right? Is to take the question of atrocity out. What is the value of faith? Right? Yeah. Yeah, Where where is that intrinsic value? Yeah, why is that something... That, that people would want when it often leads to, you know, having sort of a delusional, uh, <laughs> you know, concept of the, well, the, the, the universe and life yeah. and here's the thing. Your responsibility to Even your every, fellow man. And every so and faithful so person knows of the existence of faithful people who are faithful in something completely different than you're faithful to. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. every Catholic must look at a Muslim... And go, well, your faith is wrong. Right. And look at a Jew and go, well, your faith is wrong. I mean, good on you, I guess, for sticking with it in face so, of the Holocaust. Right. So, like, <laughs> no matter what, somebody's faith is wrong. Just the fact that there are so many creeds, so many uh, denominations, so many different versions of faith out yeah. there. I think you should that, always doubt your faith. I think that, like, your average, you know intelligent person of faith mm. right um that that they have to have an ecumenical view of like of 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 religion it, to, to some extent they believe that their catholicism is obviously the best way right right but i don't think they th- they they view the faith of muslims or of jews as being a wasted exercise or mm. that they don't have faith in essentially the same God. It's just that their practice is different and foreign and lesser and not, <laughs> not their pure Catholic way. Right. And so I don't think that they, they think, Oh, your, your, your faith in Allah or whatever right. is wasted. Right. Right. Now you go, find yourself a good evangelical Christian and they probably do think that. Right. But I think, you know, the thinking person of faith, right. Don't yeah. They? Yeah. Don't I don't, they? I don't I hope know. They do. I, I mean, don't all roads but... lead to the same place. <laughs> Isn't that kind of their thing? Yeah. Well, I mean, they don't lead to heaven <laughs> for a Muslim, uh, but it's like, it's cute that they're trying. <laughs> I think that's basically it. <laughs> I suppose that's true. There's like this general... right because I, I guess with Catholicism, if you're not baptized, yeah, you're you're damned, right? Right. Yeah, you don't get last rites at the right moment. Who knows what's going to happen to you? Oh God, yeah. Who knows? They should give you last rites when they baptize you, just to make sure it's covered. <laughs> just a regular, sort of an annual. Yeah, just basis. yeah. You can renew it <laughs> each year. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, uh, do we have any folks to thank? We actually do, yeah. Um, we have uh, one new faithful listener, mm. Scott. Thank you very much. 
And then we have two new venerable listeners. Ooh. We have Jenny and we have Brandy. So thank you so much to the both of you. Wow. Um, and as always, Dan, we have our top turn. Oh, our light and savior, Davis. Oh, Davis, thank you so much. If you guys want to become part of this crew, uh, the most beautiful people on the earth, mm. you can go to thankgodimatheist.com. You can click on the support tab. And then you decide what level you want to support us. You, it, you know, yeah. doesn't have to be a lot, but uh, your support means so much to us. It's uh, it's the main way that we keep this thing going. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we do have ads, but the, believe me, it's nothing compared to our listener support. Yeah. Uh, so we thank you guys so much, and uh, and yeah, go do it. Dan. <laughs> yes. Uh BYU as we mentioned at the begin at the top of the show. The Brigham Young University. Yeah, they uh they did something very unexpected, I would say. Oh. Um this this week. Yeah. Um they they changed or I guess you, they removed some wording from their honor code. Now, for those of you who don't <laughs> know sort of BYU and the on-campus culture of BYU, <laughs> uh, they have th- this honor if code. You can which, call it that. Right. The, 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 a, a lot of institutions will have some kind of honor code, right? This is not a completely foreign or strange concept, no. right? But what BYU has done with their honor code is that they essentially have, um, they use it to enforce certain things from their from all their students yeah. uh such as uh, church attendance um abstinence from from sex uh alcohol tobacco uh all all the th- coffee uh all the things that mormons are not su- supposed to do they have it sort of codified and in the rules of BYU and students can sort of rat each other out. Yeah. Right. Um, there are also other things such as um, there's sort of dress and grooming standards, which are enforced. Um, and if you violate these things, you were referred. They, call, they, call, they say that you were referred. Mm. You were reported. Right. Uh, to the honor code office. Right. Or sort of the on campus religious police. Who have the authority to. Uh, to take various steps, uh, including and not limited, but not limited to uh, kicking you the fuck out of the school. Oh yeah, if you violate the honor code, you can be kicked out of BYU. Yeah, I'm, and they have other lesser yeah. punishments and whatever. Yeah, of course. Uh, anyway, they used to have wording that was like, uh, "No homo." Was it basically? What? Yeah, it was the whole you can be but you can't act. Right. Yes. You, yes, right. they had gotten so progressive <laughs> that they had said you can actually be gay, which when you were there, oh, you couldn't you couldn't even tell anyone you were gay or you would have been you would have gotten the boot right then, right? Yeah. Uh but then they were like, "Oh, look at how progressive we are. <laughs> we allow people to be gay here. You just can't do gay." Right. And probably don't, like, wear a weird color <laughs> while you're here. Don't get weird about it. No rainbows. Yeah. Uh, it, n- literally, there was, a, there, was, there was wording about uh, appropriate gender-specific behavior. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, no involvement with pornographic or indecent material, well, which... But no, no students are allowed that. Right. Uh, which there, <laughs> you are telling... College aged pe- college aged people not to have sex and also don't look at porn. <laughs> Good luck. Um, anyway, uh, and then and then definitely and then no inappropriate sexual activity, which they still say nobody's allowed to have sex outside of a straight marriage. Like right, there's a one man one woman marriage is the only time any uh, BYU student is allowed to have sex. Right. And then they said no homosexual uh, behavior. Right. Well, but whatever the fuck that means. Right. So they removed this. So they removed the the no no homosexual behavior. It's now right. it, yeah. So so all of a sudden, 
there was celebration. There was much BYU rejoicing. Campus. And there was a picture on the on the front page of the Salt Lake Tribune this morning of two uh, female students kissing in front of the Brigham Young statue. Two ladies kissing. Two ladies kissing. Um, and, and yeah, so there was there was there was celebration, mm. and people thought that this was going to be a major step forward for the mm-hmm. university. However. Uh, today, the university made that made it really clear um, that while the wording might have ch- been removed, the rules have not changed. Right. Well, they yeah. What they said was that uh, that that yes that the 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 principles of the honor code remain the same. <laughs> this was a tweet. What the fuck this mean? BYU's. Means. Tw- I've been. I have to follow BYU's. Twitter now apparently because so they were trying to just sneak this stuff in under the wire. They just tweeted out that there was a new, uh, an an a, a, a change to the honor code. Right. Um, that honor code, by the way, is universal to all. The honor code itself, even though there are slight differences in like dress codes and stuff, right. it's universal to all church-owned schools. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. But uh, yes, apparently they they. Honor Code Office Director Kevin Utt uh, has said that there uh, that the changes, even though we have removed more prescriptive language, the principles are the same. We don't know what that means. No. Um, and they have also tweeted out that they will be handling uh, any questions that arise on a case by case basis. <laughs> Oh, great. Quote, for example, since dating means different things to different people, the honor code office will work with students individually. How does it mean different things to different people? Well, dating? To some people, it means just, you know, going roller skating at the at the local rink. And to other people, it means going to get ice cream at the cougar <laughs> eat. <laughs> it means hardcore pornography and, and orgiastic sex. I don't, you know, it's it. I mean, so certain students have called in and and gotten word that like you hold. I don't know, holding hands. Who knows? I n- no. It it is now uh, dangerous waters. Well, yeah, that, because that need to be tested. We'll see if those two girls on the cover of the if they're students it, next week. Yeah, exactly. Still at BYU. Well, they'll probably. I mean, they that they would probably just get sort of a very stern. <clears throat> talking to and mm, but they got their picture taken and it was published on the front page of the tribune i don't think they'd I get think ejected it's... because it would be too big of a scandal if they got well, ejected. well fair enough so i think i think they will get sit downs with bishops and all sorts of people talking to them i think very serious men in very serious black group dark colored suits mm. will have very serious conversations with them and they'll probably let them sort of through on a technicality. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, sisters, because we understand there was that some confusion. We understand that you didn't know, but we're very concerned that you would have done this in the first place. What's going on, sister? <laughs> sister Johansson, are you okay? Is, have we failed you in some way oh, that you would act against the church like this? Yeah. Under the gaze of Brigham Young <laughs> statue. <laughs> gaze under the gaze. <laughs> it's a... Uh, oh, God. I mean, really, there's no story here because the more things change, the more they remain the same. Oh, yeah, no. The more I just church- love the, the, the sort of... Uh, th- this attempt to... Um, they want it. They're they're trying to take away their PR problems, right? right? Because they would love for all the progressives in the world to look at them and go, look at how progressive this church is, right? Even though they want nothing to do with the progressives of the world, right? Right? They but do, they want, they want they everyone want, to like them. They so want much. everyone to like them. So they're trying to get rid of all these PR problems, but not change. But they don't want to actually <laughs> change the underlying sort of issues right and problems that they have in order to just the the, the the these pr problems just wouldn't be a thing right right there would be no little sticking points if they just fundamentally just got cool all of a sudden about 
gay people. Right. So what ends up happening is they keep trying to make these things that will be like, they try to like quietly take away something that looks bad. And then when everybody goes, whoa, you took that away. Are you changing? They're like, oh, uh, n- uh no, no. <laughs> you didn't think that no, we're not- by us no longer prohibiting it in <laughs> writing <laughs> meant that we allow it. Right. Do you? Yeah. No. It's, uh, that's, that's a strange conclusion to jump to. Yeah. How funny. They, the, the same thing kind of happened recently when they changed. All of this arose because they changed their handbook. And the handbook oh, is what yeah. goes out to, you know, it's it's what uh, their their leaders are supposed to go by yeah, yeah. and all this stuff. And they took out some anti-gay language in it and they changed around some stuff. And there was some stuff about trans people that's now in the handbook. Oh. That's uh, that's fascinating. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, they're, again, it's the same sort of thing where they're like trying to be cool. Like, just so you know. You should be warm and welcoming to all people who want to come to your church and want to be, you know, worship there and all that mm-hmm. sort of thing. But also, we know that trans people are bad and, like, gender's a real thing and biology, you know, if yeah. whatever you were assigned at birth is what matters and that's all that matters. Right. And, uh, you know, this nonsense is 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 not okay. Yeah. Well, and they with these changes, they've also officially uh, banned transgender people from the temple. Right. Well, um, yeah. Exactly. If if you and again they're saying if you feel trans, if you feel it, that's one thing. <laughs> but if you tr- start to make a transition, if you start to, to actually act in accordance with your actual gender identity, yeah, uh, then then we got a problem. You can just f- you can feel the dysphoria. That's <laughs> fine with us. Oh God, that's fine. <laughs> It's so messed up. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, so great. yes, if, if if you if you try if you try not not just medical and surgical interventions, but like literally just social social, just saying, hey, please call me by my by the correct uh, pronouns. Right. No, they're not cool with that. <laughs> That's not going to be okay. And then you're banned from the temple. Uh, yeah, exactly. Which, so, you know, count yourself lucky. <laughs> right. If you get oh, banned no, from that place. I don't get to go to the most boring, weird ass place on earth. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, I, uh, guess, I guess I learned my lesson. Guess, don't throw me in that briar patch. Oh, God. Okay. I guess I'll just not go. Darn. Can you ban me from my work, too, but still get me paid? I would love it. I would love it. I'll oh, be as golly. trans as you want. <laughs> oh well, that's the Mormons. They're uh, they're out there doing yeah. the the good work of not doing good anything. Lord. All right. Well, kids, if you have any thoughts uh, that you'd like to write into us about, you can do so. It's podcast at thankgodimatheist dot com. Or call and leave us a voicemail message. Mm-hmm. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Yeah, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist. Click the like button. Do it! And while on Facebook, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and request to join us. Closed group. It's moderated. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, hey, and do the Twitter thing too, at TGI Atheist. Mm-hmm. Do all those things. While you're there, What? look, we need to appreciate who's working the the magic on yeah. these things Mackenzie thank you so much for your work on the members uh, or on the the page uh, thanks to Danny and Amy for working on the, the the members only lounge and of course a big thanks goes out to the Red Rock Hot Club and to Gordon Johnston for the use of their music and thank you so much to you dear listener for tuning in bye bye bye